Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading the story of Bonzi the Sad Clown. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. And yes, this is a long, long 4chan post, and this is like the one of the most well-known um, D&D stories ever. Or a collection of 4chan posts, I guess. I have a couple of stories flowing around uh, TG at this point. I think that's table games or something. Mostly about the ND with my amazing DM. But what people don't know about him is just how dark he can get. Take our Call of Cthulhu campaign. So we get a lot of little levity and may have overstepped our bounds, which put the DM, or GM in this case, into maximum and passive aggressive mode in three sessions. A group of four play a four of play there's us less no less than two dozen characters. Okay, that was. A group of four players lost no less than two dozen characters, and they went out brutally. Some caught fire, some lost their minds and went reveling into the night, and more than a couple shot themselves after taking out an ally or semi important NPC. Needless to say, we had lost a lot of hope for playing a full campaign with a single old character. And then I created Bonzi, the sad clown. Bonzi was my way of trying to apologize to the DM, a way to appease him, if you will. After all, what better way to show heartbreak than the simple of joy and fun shattered into a, a broken and unloved shell. Bonzi dressed simply. He wore very little makeup and a small red nose, had dark hair, and his clown uniform was covered with an old warrant trench coat, which was not as bad as, as it implied. He had a slight drinking problem, but managed to maintain sobriety without withdrawal, and never seemed to crack a smile. He met the other players by chance, having missed his bus and decided to bum it in town for a few days, because hell, it's not like he really had anywhere to be after all. The first character to find me thought I was a traveling clown, and tried to strike up a chat about his chosen career. Hey, Bonzi! Know any good jokes? <coughs> Why did little Susie fall off the swings? I don't know. Why? Because little Susie lost her arms to cancer years ago. Bonzi sighed, so he reached out and honked his nose. The table was said quiet, save for the player I just spoke to. He wore a priceless expression of a sweet god you're serious and quietly giggled. Do, uh, you know any others? Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Susie. Honk. The game proceeded rather organically from there, with the occasional interjection from Bonzi on why the town was fucked up and we should leave. But any counter like Ryan, who just so happened to be the lo local cult leader, Bonzi was the first to know. After all, who else would know when someone was faking anything? A trap we said was sim what we said was simple. But if anyone on un here has played Call of Cthulhu, then you know simple doesn't mean it. Jack. We entered the a library, two of us moving into the roof, the third earth sleeping behind the building, leading the charge. The only one who didn't care what happened? Bonzi. The sad clown Ever so quietly locked on, knocked on the door, watching the librarian fish for his keys as rain gently drizzled in the night outside the windows. Bonzi entered, took off his coat, and draped over his arm with only a few words of greeting. As we talked, our third guy suddenly found himself at the business end of, of a shotgun. And as if he was a machine pulled out another character and started generating a new character. The other two were just as unlucky, knocked down and grappled by other cultists who were on the stairwell. Everyone was already pulling out sheets, wondering how they made a mistake and were going to do better next time. 
but they forgot Fonzie. After all, nobody cares about Fonzie. The librarian, still unaware of the ruse, pretends and sat act nice, talking about the books and how he hopes that the fire was going to be enough to dry off. Then Fonzie, hearing the clatter inside, his act. The librarian. And also decides to ask the, the obvious question of Bonzi. So, since you're a clown, I'm sure you know plain jokes. Got any about books? Sure. What did what the one book say to the other? What? I was just checking if we're on the same page. Honk. Blam! Bonzi fired a revolver he was hiding under his coat. Spraying the librarian's brains over the bookshelves directly behind him. And this, of course, all alerted the cultists to the sad clown below. And the one behind the building decides to investigate, leaving the tied up e player beaten, but alive. The cultist around the corner, pulling out his. The cultist rounds the corner, pulling out his gun and trying to spot something in the library. He never saw a Bonzi behind him with the law book. Ten hits over the head, and later, Bonzi wipes the blood off his face and examines his work. Guess I threw the book at you, honk. The other three cultists in the room have sent two of, of their own to investigate, which were probably disposed of by the sad clown lurking in the shadows with the gun and, a, and the collected works of Shakespeare. Not to be, I guess. Honk. After freeing his allies and finding a map of the area, Bonzi turned to his group and said flatly, I'll be in the car. Reading it in the dark is bad for your eyes. Honk. The campaign continued without much happening for a while, losing only one member in the span of a month of game time, which we thought spoke highly of our redeemed status. But wouldn't stop yet. I wanted to ensure our GM wasn't going to kill us in the middle of the night. Fonzi remained just as sad, and it served them well when they met the second group of cultists. As you ask. The location was an abandoned funeral home. Apparently, cult was of an eldritch god who was most powerful with the dead. No big surprise, seeing as everyone up to this point had connections with some dead family member from years ago. We pulled the car around the back. Heck. To sneak in an event and two Bonzi sneak in the back door. We knock out two guards and uh, tie them up with a stretchy rubber chicken. Then make our way deeper into the building. First, when we find what they called the morgue. The cultist tosses a knife, landing in Bonzi's ally's shoulder. Bonzi pulls out a gun and fires off two in the cultist's chest, killing him and blowing their coffee. Bonzi wastes no time in preparing his next plan. He pulls out the knife and stifles the wound, having been a performer, he had dealt with knife wounds before, and thrown away by the door with a gun while Bonzi walled to the shadows and to meet up with the rest of the group. He spotted Coldus in the hall, but managed to hide long enough to sneak behind him as the Coldus pass. Bonzi raised his knife to his throat and slid it, and quietly slid before he could alert the others. Guess that was a close shave, honk. The other or upstairs cleared the rest out and helped Bonzi lug the wounded character back to the car. But not before they saw another group of cultists preparing for something nasty in the wings of the funeral uner home. So Bonzi opts to investigate. With a friend, of course. Bonzi was sad, not stupid. Investigating paid off, and Bonzi and the friend uncovered the cultists attempting to a ritual to summon their dead god. And a character says with a few minutes, he could put a bomb together. It looks like it'll take more time. So Bonzi volunteers. <clears throat> Imagine the cult of surprise when this rather depressed looking clown walls out from the shadows. Holding a little flower and a deck of cards. 
It was time for the routine. What did the dead god say to the humorless cultists? Is it dead in here or what? Honk. Who are you, clown? Please, call me Bonzi. Clown was my father. Honk. And cultist mother a hashabe about how to kill Bonzi was taking his time to turn the flower into a napkin and then pulling it out of his sleeve. One cultist got closer and Bonzi offered him a hand of cards. Pick a card. Any card. The cultist reached for a card. Not that one. The cultist stopped and reached for another. Not that one either. Finally, the cultist grabs his card, slides it, and offers it to Bonzi. Why are you giving it, it back? Because you're going to make it disappear! And a waste of perfectly good playing card. Honk. The cultists finally run out of here and pull out a knife to sacrifice a sad clown before them to their dead god. Lucky, Bonzi. Bonzi, the friend finishes the bomb just in time, which he tosses to Bonzi. The cultists finally run- Oh wait, sorry. The clown lifts us up as the timer counts down. The cultists back off. Back up, waiting for a pun from the strange clown. No clever words this time. Not really. Are you out of jokes? No, I just want to go out with a bang honk. After we hightailed it out there, the group managed to save the player with a knife wound, and Bonzi survived with only minor injuries and a scar on his upper arm from a easing bullet. Dozens of puns, sad clown routines, and close shaves later, we, we decode the last clue from the books, and we had it. The final showdown. On the spot where everything was come to an end. I think somewhere, and we all knew Bonzi was tired of being sad all the time. Bonzi was going to finally have his peace. A graveyard hundreds of years old and plenty creepy was full of cult altars that seemed armed to the teeth with daggers and strange magic. We had found a way to hoard the weapons from the police station and enter the fray. Like a four-man army right out of the Pulp Fiction books, we left nothing in our wake and cleverly averted disaster after disaster. Bonzi took a couple hits, but he was already sad, so it wasn't like anyone noticed. When we reached the last inner circle of the cult, we took a small vote about who would take point and most dangerous position on our last mission. Bonzi then he doesn't even finish listening, instead waddling out into the dark grass and honking his nose with the deepest frown on his face. The cause aside, the bait killing me, but the leader lets Bonzi draw closer. I think it was out of curiosity rather than an ingenious plan. Whatever drove him allowed Bonzi to draw within punching distance. There were no words, no puns, only the cold stares of two men in the dark, surrounded by ancient chanting and dark magic that warps the very flesh of any who touch it. Then Bonzi pulls out a long balloon, which I remember having practiced this for a week in advance. You know what I hate most about being a clown? Bonzi asks after inflating the balloon. It's the assumption that I'm going to be happy and smiling, and always ready with a joke. Everyone sees a clown, and suddenly they can't be unhappy. At least, not really unhappy. How can someone with a lifetime of jokes and puns ever be sad? Shouldn't they be smiling and laughing and carrying around rubber chickens all the time? Bonzi shows the balloon to the cultist, revealing a puppy. I offered the real one to my GM. But we can and be sad. In fact, I think we have to be sad. People want to be happy so much. They'll ignore everyone around them to keep their illusion of happiness. I accept that. After all, I'm Bonzi. My job is to be unhappy, so everyone else can be happy and smile and laugh. That's what clowns do. We make people happy.
Bonzi reaches into his sleeve and pulls out the only picture on his person. A little girl with a young, smiling Bonzi. I wanted Susie to be happy. Bonzi reveals a grenade in his other hand, just underneath the balloon animal. As the cultist pulls away, he realizes he's too late to notice the grenade pin attached to the bottom loop of the feet of the balloon puppy. As it clings, the cultist drops the balloon and shouts for everyone to back up. Bonzi smiles as the rest of the team re clears out the inner circle, leaving the leader and Bonzi near the center. As he's about to leave, Bonzi grabs the man's wrist and slides on a trick cuff. Fleur looks on his wrist and, and back up to Bonzi, who is honest to God, smiling as the outward monster begins to manifest in the mortal world. Bonzi picks up the animal, holds it, and grins gently as the outward god begins to take form. That's all, folks. Honk. The rest of the group looked for hours through the bloody, mangled mess of the god and cultists for anything of Bonzi. But they found nothing. Were it not for Bonzi blowing up his, the heart of the monster as it arrived, the undead god would have fully formed and taken the world with plagues of undeath and decay. But now it lay broken and would need to reform over eons in the cold regions of space. The party did manage to find something of Bonzi, finding a lone old photo of a smiling clown and a little girl. They took the photo. Oh, oh, had a few words on the back. And Jim read them in a quiet voice. To Bonzi. Thank you for always making her happy. Susie thanks you. They left the photo on a small grave marker in the town's newer graveyard. They decided to leave town. Before they left, Juan produced a rubber nose from his pocket and tied it to the grave. And like that, they left Bonzi. Not the sad clown. The clown that was so sad. So everyone else could be happy. And that was Bonzi the Sad Clown. Honestly, a pretty heart touching story, especially at the end there. And I know this video was a little bit shorter than un unusual. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye.